Hello, this is Tyler Disney from Integral Group Oakland office um, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Navis Freedom Viewer to view 3D models that are outputted from our Revit files. So the idea with this is that um, if you don't know Revit, if you don't have Revit on your computer um, or your computer sucks and you can't open Revit, um, Sometime, you know, in the past, the only way we've been able to to know what's going on in the project is to look at PDF outputs. But um, there's a lot of value in PMs and other people who aren't in Revit knowing what is actually in the 3D model. So we are trying to build a workflow where you can figure that out. And Navis Works Freedom is the uh, tool that I think will help us do that. So um, to get it, open up your browser of choice. Mine is Google Chrome. If your browser of choice is um, Internet Explorer, make a different choice. Uh, so type in Navis Freedom Viewer. Um, and this should be the right one. It's an Autodesk website. It looks like this. Make sure that you're set to Free Viewer. You have to fill out some crap here, but you can totally lie on everything. Um, and then hit Submit. It will give you a normal download. Fair warning, it's a really friggin' big download. It's like 700 megabytes, so if you don't have a fast internet connection, give yourself some time to do it. Maybe do it overnight, something like that. But uh, there's no surprises in the download process. You just need to know, I think, if you have a 64-bit or a 32-bit machine. Uh, but other than that, it is standard. So um, once you get it, open it. Um, now, I'm not going to cover in this tutorial how to export to DWIFs um, because this video is kind of meant for people who don't, who aren't in Revit. Um, so that'll be a, a different thing. So here's the um, program. Uh, and now open and browse to the location where you have saved your um, the DWIF. You might have gotten emailed it or pointed to it, uh, a location on the server. Uh, when you browse for it, make sure that you're set to look for DWIFs, because I think the default is to look for a Navisworks file format. Um, so you need to change that to DWIF, and then you'll be able to see the file. Open it. Alright, here we go. Um, here's Pomona. This is a very early model, so it's going to be rough, but uh, try not to worry about that. Um, so if you want to pan around like I'm doing right now, I'm holding down my middle mouse button. Um, so that's not super useful. If I want to uh, orbit around, hold down shift, and then click the middle mouse button, and move the mouse. If you want to zoom in, uh, use the scroll wheel and it zooms towards where your mouse is or it should so just be aware of that um, the pivot point however appears to be the center of the model or your selection so if you want to um, if you're right here um, and it's not and that thing is not selected and you rotate you're going to be rotating around Oh, that. Never mind. Good to go. Um, so, right. A couple other uh, navigation things. You'll notice this uh, number of buttons over here. You can uh, use it to zoom in on things. You can use it to pan, pan things, uh, look around, orbit. Uh, fiddle around with those. Get used to those. Um, the This is called the view cube. The view cube is very useful. Um, uh, to orient yourself, so like if I'm clicking on this view, it'll orient my view to that. Um, uh, or say I want to go to an orthographic view, just get an overview. That's nice. I can look at the top. Um, also, uh, if I right click the view cube, it gives me some options that are um, y useful. So if I want to change this to perspective, I can do that and it's sort of nicer. Um, the thing about the thing about orthographic view is that I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this because the building would be in the way, if, if you understand what I'm saying. But if I'm in perspective, I can be nestled right in here. So 
Uh, sometimes one versus the other is more useful. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for um, wandering around. Uh, if you go to the viewpoint uh, tab, there's some other controls in here. Uh, you can also control the, uh, the the display settings, so you can go wireframe, which looks kind of crazy, uh, or hidden line. Hidden line is probably going to be chuggy, I'm guessing. Eh, not too bad. Uh, I recommend keeping it unshaded. Um, okay, so the other main thing is that you're going, well, that's fine, but, you know, we're mechanical engineers here. Uh, where's the mechanical stuff? I just see a couple cooling towers. How do I hide architecture? So um, that's a good question. Um, if you go to the Home tab and then click Selection Tree, uh, this tree over here will show you kind of all of the stuff. So everything that's in here should be all of the sort of elements that are in our model that we made. So that's mechanical equipment, that's uh, ducts, that's uh, fittings and pipes and stuff like that. Um, and here, this is going to be the Revit links. And on this particular model, the only link we have is the architectural model. Soon we'll have the structural model and we might link in, you know, electrical and TCOM and some other ones. But for now, there's just one. If you expand that, you can see bunch of architectural looking stuff um, but I can just right click that and say hide there's also a you know, keyboard shortcut for that um, and, and it'll hide all that stuff which is nice um, and I can look around and see oh yeah hey there's my there's some exhaust fans and the riser going down and cooling towers and looks like uh, some basement equipment with risers and pipes and here's some classroom or lab duct views so um, uh, so that's handy you can also individually hide stuff um, by selecting it and I'm selecting stuff by right clicking on it um, oh you can left click on it it's a blunder thing um, but notice that when you click on something it pops up here in the element manual or selection tree um, and you can discover things about it um, for example, this is an air handler. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell what's going on. So uh, there you have it. That's a quick and dirty introduction to using Navis Freedom Viewer to look at models. I uh, hope you found it helpful. Thanks.